Well, hey guys, Simon here, and Minecraft! Minecraft! Single player Minecraft! Um, I'm only doing this because the internet is broken. So, uh, somebody broke my internet. And I don't know who it is. But I'm playing single player Minecraft, and I'm working on the war at the moment, because, as you may know, I've been playing multiplayer a lot. And I haven't actually thought about what I want to build in my single player world. So I guess I'll do things that don't require too much thinking. And that means, well, building the wall, because I've already designed the wall. I'm going to build all the foundations. You see a couple of tower foundations there, if you remember. There's a tower, each tower is a foundation, and then in between the towers we have the walkways and the arches, right? So I'm going to build all the foundations for the towers for the rest of the wall. The wall is only half complete, but I'm going to do it all at once. Well, not at once. I'm going to do it all um, in parallel, I guess you should call it. So all the tower foundations. And uh, I guess I want to say a little something about things I've learned from playing in multiplayer. I mean, multiplayer, the, the sapling server is really good. I mean, if you haven't been on there yet. I mean, as you know, I'm not really a multiplayer kind of guy, but there's good people there, and the owner, as I, as I keep saying, like, Erndo, he's a pretty cool guy too. Like, he's a good guy, runs a good server. Mostly it's, it's good people that makes a good server. Like, I guess the technical bits are important as well, having good mods uh, to protect from griefers and whatnot. And some fun things like uh, PvP and then mob arena. So I guess the server is kind of important, but more important than most other things, I think, is good people. So, and I'm quite happy that you guys, the guys who watch my videos, also turn out to be good people. I guess there's a bit of selection going on because I, you know, talk about. Oh crap, I, I'm missing a... Oh no, it's alright. Because, you know, I, I talk about design and I talk about somewhat intellectual things, right? And so, it turns out most of you guys are also intelligent people. So, um, that's cool. What else do I have? I'm not actually getting to the point that I want to get to. But uh, I've been quite happy with the with the server and playing the multiplayer there. Although playing on multiplayer, I end up building less and just spending more time messing around and, and looking at things. Which I guess happens, but I still manage to build a few things. I'm mostly still trying to decide how to record and what to record on the multiplayer because, you know, with other people there, it's not quite the same, whereas you know, here I can just build stuff and then and record that. If I record other people's things, I really should get permission first. And it's better to get people to talk about their own builds. But most people aren't very talkative. And so I don't really know, like I end up doing more of my stuff. And it seems, I feel like that's not really giving enough credit to the other builders on the server. But at the same time, the other builders I'm all very talkative, and there's a lot of half-finished builds. And and again, like I've said this to some people before, like talking about architecture is not easy. I mean, it's a, it's a separate set of skills. Like you, making buildings is one set of skill. Talking about buildings is a, is a different set of skill. So sometimes people just say, "Oh, I don't, I don't know. I just design stuff. I just make stuff. I just do whatever." Like, it's not actually true. Obviously, everyone thinks, right? When you're building stuff, you think about stuff. But not everyone is able to articulate their thought process. Mostly because they haven't been trained to do it. And it does actually take training. Like, a lot of architecture school is, in fact, practicing talking about architecture. Not so much... I mean, obviously, you have to practice making architecture as well. Or at least designing. Not actually getting anything built, but the designing part. The skill of talking about architecture is just as important. Mostly because if you can't communicate your ideas, I mean, how are you going to get things built, right? How are you going to tell people to give you money to build stuff if you can't even tell people 
what it is they, they're going to give you the money to do and things like that. So I found that, yeah, people are lacking in that department, not, not necessarily designing. I've seen some pretty interesting stuff being built, but more being able to explain what they're thinking and what they're building in a logical and interesting way, you know? And again, it's not their fault. Like, who <laughs> The only way you learn to do that is to basically to go to architecture school, for one, and two, to practice doing it a lot. And most people don't actually do that. I'm still not getting to the point that I want to get to, but I guess I'll just ramble a bit since I'm here and playing. Um, what else do I want to say? Oh wait, I need water under here, do I? Anyway. Um, so, most people also don't understand urban design. And I'm a little bit concerned about that. Urban design, like, one person. <laughs> I talked to him. Like, he asked me, oh, can I have a plot in your city? And then I asked him, okay, well, what have you built? And then he shows me what, we, what he builds, and then I, I look at it, and it's obvious that he hasn't considered urban design. Urban, urban is city. Urban design is the design of cities. In fact, urban planning, go to Wikipedia. Go to pick Wikipedia right, right now. Damn it, I need my... I need my planks and what are... Oh, here we go. Go to Wikipedia right now and look up urban planning. Alright. It's pretty easy. Urban planning. Wikipedia, look it up. Read the whole thing. Read it. Read it. Read the whole article. Let me see. It's a pretty long article. Uh, okay, let's not do that. It's a pretty long article, but it's a good one. And especially, like, read the history of urban planning. And it's become a sort of a running joke in the server, in the sapling server, that I keep telling people to build more roads. And it's... But nobody understands. I, I, or I think people kind of understand, but they don't really. If you read that Wikipedia article on urban planning, you notice they talk about roads a lot. The layout of roads. How, you know, the Romans would build their cities. Obviously, the Romans, they had pretty good roads linking the cities together, but within cities as well, they would build roads to, you know, to basically to, to define the city and to lay it out because the spaces between the roads are the buildings and and the owners of the buildings control their own building, right? So, but the, the city as a whole controls the roads or the, the layout of the roads. And they talk about how the Roman, the ideal Roman cities are laid out in a grid. And, you know, one, two, three, wait a minute. One, two, okay, I don't actually want that. Uh, yeah, and they talk about how... What was I saying? Yeah, so the ideal cities are laid out in grids. And that, basically, you leave room for the roads. And obviously, roads are there for transportation. And if a city... Look, if a city has bad transportation, it's, it's a pretty bad city. Like you can't... What is a city? Like, people don't, don't think about this. What is a city? A city is a lot of buildings. Yeah, that's a good, that's a start. But it's not just buildings, though, right? There's the buildings and the roads. So what, what like, why, why are there cities? Why do people live in cities? People live in cities, or... Let's say people form cities because there is a benefit to living in close proximity to other people. I mean, if you even consider smaller things like towns, villages, like why are there villages? Why don't people just live in a random house out in the middle of nowhere? It's because, like, well, I mean, we have enough people, like if you have more people, there's protection, 
there's a sort of an insurance policy, like if, if, if you get sick, other people look after you, and there's also the economic benefits of uh, specialization, so uh, go read go read um, Adam Smith, The Wealth of Nations. Adam Smith. <laughs> okay, this, this, it's a pretty big book, you don't really have to read it, but maybe try to familiarize yourself with the, the basic concepts. Uh, Wealth of Nations by Adam Smith. I mean, he wrote that book around about the Industrial Revolution, talking about how, basically how the Industrial Revolution worked. And it's all about specialization and division of labor. The idea that when you have a group of people working together, and they specialize, they do different tasks, they are able to do things a lot more efficiently. And therefore, when working together, their production or their productivity increases dramatically. So what does that mean? Let's say if you have to do everything yourself. Imagine yourself in the real world, you have to do everything yourself. Uh, one, two, three, four, yes, right. So you have to hunt your own food, you have to build your own house, you have to make your own clothes. Um, you're not going to be very good at any of those things because you're not, you know, you're not focusing. I mean, how many of you, how many of you make your own clothes? You, you don't. How many of you manufactured the computer that you're watching this video on? No one did. Like, how, how do computers get made? Because somebody spends all their time making the computer, right? And in fact, a lot of people in a factory work together to make the computer. And they make thousands and thousands of computers. And they obviously don't make them for themselves. They make them to sell. And then, you know, other people make other things. Some people make shoes, as I said, clothes. Some people build houses. Some people are doctors. Some people are teachers. So everyone has a job. Everyone has a specialty. And they trade their goods and services with each other so that together they all get everything they need but they, they focus on one thing at a time so that they get better at it and they're, and they're, you know, they're more skilled at it. And so that's specialization. So what does that have to do with cities? Well, cities put people closer together and so it's easier for them to trade things. In fact, the first settlements would have been basically would have been trading hubs. Basically, people come together to exchange their products and then when pe enough people come together to the same place, some people start living there permanently because there's people there. And they can get their resources from other people and then when they make stuff, they can sell it to the other people in that same place. That's why people come together to work together, to help each other, and to do things, and to specialize, and to trade. So that is the basic concept of a... Did I build those things in the right place? That's the basic concept of a city. Like, why do cities exist? because of that trade. So then, back to my point, the roads. Why are roads important? What, what, what do roads do? Roads enable people to travel, right? So a good info, and it's not just roads, I guess, in, in, in Minecraft, it's mostly roads, but railways, ships, airports, it allows people to travel. It allows um, materials and products and goods to also travel. Did I build things in the right place? Yes, I did. Yeah, so so you can transport these goods from one place to another, so people can trade them more easily. And I, I'm kind of losing track of what I'm trying to say. So, I mean, that's why cities exist. And that's why, you know, roads exist. For Well, that's one of the reasons why roads exist. To, to enable people to get to each other and to enable people to transport their goods to each other. Now in Minecraft, you can actually do everything yourself. Like, it's not, it's not as difficult, although it's, it's somewhat less efficient. But in fact, in Minecraft, it's actually more fun to do things yourself. 
But even on the server that I play on now, I find that I'm specializing a bit. I'm specializing in building. Like people will ask me, "Hey, do you need cobblestone?" And I say, "Yeah, I do." And so they give me cobblestone. So I spend less time mining and more time building because I'm a builder, right? I'm an architecture student, so I, I end up building a lot. And other people will give me materials so I can just keep building. And and I don't think they're even aware of of the the theory of what's going on. But that's basically it because there are more. There's more than just me on that server. I end up specializing on 72, 71, 8, 9, 9 times 8 is 72, right? Yeah, so 9, okay, so I want it to be 72. Uh, 71, and then the another layer is 72, okay. So, I mean, even on, on a game like Minecraft, that's happening. I'm specializing. And they are also specializing. Some people like they just mine a lot and get a lot of diamonds because they love diamonds, or whatever it is, gold and iron or whatever. So they'll mine and they'll end up with a lot of cobblestone, which they don't need. And they'll, I mean, I don't trade. I don't really believe in selling and buying cobblestone. That's kind of silly. But nevertheless, we'll trade. Like they'll give me the cobblestone and I'll use it to build roads. <laughs> and no one else. Very few other people build roads on the server because they don't understand the road. I, I, I'm getting to that. That's what I'm trying to get to, the roads. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight.